Tomo News presents Robots, our overlords of tomorrow. Google's new robotic dog takes abuse from its engineers and will probably end up killing us all in a decade for it. A Google subsidiary named Boston Dynamics has unveiled a new robot dog named Spot on YouTube that is going as viral as its quadruped forebearers. The four-legged robot uses an electric motor to power hydraulic actuators, giving it animal-like mobility. In the video, Spot can be seen walking indoors, walking outside up hills, climbing stairs, and running. Spot also gets kicked, showing off its autocorrection sensors and will probably be one of the reasons for humanity's downfall. Just kidding. Maybe. Anyway, weighing in around 163 pounds or 73 kilograms, Spot is the leanest and most agile in a long line of canine and bovine-like robots from Boston Dynamics. Earlier iterations were larger and developed to carry heavy loads. However, Spot has been built for search and rescue or scouting. Now, Boston Dynamics was based in Walton, Massachusetts and was purchased by Google for an undisclosed amount of money in December of 2013. The division which has worked with DARPA in the past has gained an international reputation for these machines that walk with an uncanny sense of balance, can run at cheetah-like speeds faster than the fastest humans, and jump up to about 30 feet or 9 meters. Crime-fighting robots go on patrol in California Silicon Valley. Nightscope has developed crime-fighting robots that are now on patrol in California. Two K-5 security robots have been placed in a parking lot in Silicon Valley. They are 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall, weigh about 135 kilos or 300 pounds, and are outfitted with a laser scanner and a 360-degree video camera. The robots patrol using a LiDAR technology that delivers 3D maps. They rove throughout the designated perimeter, navigate around people and things in their paths, and record activity and sounds by shooting live videos. If a crime is committed in front of the robot and the would-be burglar persists, it will record the car license plate, take pictures, send the geotag location and the time, and then send the information to a human in a command center. The robots still confront criminals, but if they're attacked, they will emit a loud chirp that will get louder as the threat persists and that will notify the control center. According to CBS News, there is already a waiting list of about four dozen companies in line to acquire K-5 that they plan to use next year in outdoor settings such as college campuses or open-air malls. A design for a device that helps clean by deploying hundreds of tiny flying robots was the winner at a recent Electrolux Design Lab competition. The MAB is equipped with a touchscreen panel that can display a layout of a house. A filter helps keep water clean. Pills that give water surface tension and viscosity to clean are deposited into the MAB through a capsule. The device is equipped with 908 tiny flying robots that can be powered by solar technology. Each robot cleans by releasing a drop of water and fly back to their stations to recharge. The technology was designed by 23-year-old Adrian Perez Zapata, who said he was inspired by the controlled flight of bees. U.S. Navy develops drone that looks like a shark. The U.S. Navy has developed a new unmanned underwater vehicle that looks and swims like a shark. The U.S. Navy's new robot shark, called Ghost Swimmer, is 5 feet long and weighs about 100 pounds, making it about the size of an albacore tuna. The robot can operate in depths ranging from 10 inches to 300 feet. It can be controlled via a 500-foot-long tether and transmit video and data in real time. It can also be launched without a tether and transmit data when it surfaces after underwater missions. The robot uses its tail for propulsion. Because it looks and moves like a real fish, the ghost swimmer is hard to spot and thus ideally suited for surveillance missions. It can also be deployed to detect underwater mines. The Ghost Swimmer is part of the Silent Nemo project, which draws inspiration from objects in the natural world to make robotic designs. UC Berkeley researchers design shape-shifting robots that can roll on the moon. These robots can change their shapes to do this. Alice Agagino is a mechanical engineering professor at UC Berkeley. Agagino and her team of researchers are trying to revolutionize space exploration with their research. It will be ridiculously inexpensive compared to the current rovers. 
We hope it will be more robust, will be faster, and be able to handle more complicated terrains. Also known as a six bar tensegrity structure, these spherical shaped robots roll along surfaces by shifting their center of gravity. They have either compressive elements that are rods or they have elastic elements which are kind of like rubber bands. And they shift their shape by pulling on the elastic elements and making them longer or shorter, uh, allowing them to take on a range of different shapes and thus change of gravity. One of the shape shifting shapes that we're interested in is for them to be flat so that in storage in a rover or in spacecraft they can be flat and then they can spring open and then be launched. Agogino says their target mission is either the moon or Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons. In addition to space exploration, researchers are also finding ways to use these robots on Earth. We're also exploring applications where, in fact, the aircraft itself might be a tensegrity that can fly through the air, drop on the ground, and actually conduct some kind of search and rescue or delivery of emergency supplies. Although the first robot prototype was built with Legos, the latest version has been upgraded with aluminum rods and 3D printed parts. Robots will clean and carry bags at Japan's Haneda Airport. Tokyo's Haneda Airport is set to get three different kinds of robots. An exoskeleton that fits over airport workers' bodies and interprets signals from their brains will help Haneda Airport staff in moving heavy merchandise. Robots that are designed to clean the facilities at the airport 24 hours a day will also be deployed. Meanwhile, robots capable of supporting 200 kilograms in weight will be used to aid passengers who are unable to carry their own luggage. Officials say the use of robots will help reduce costs, and the program may possibly be expanded to other airports. The concept of using robots at the airport comes ahead of an expected large influx of visitors to the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, with officials also hoping the program will bring worldwide attention to Japan's innovative technology. Robots are being used by the U.S. Border Patrol to monitor underground tunnels built by drug cartels to smuggle contraband across the border. The Border Patrol now uses robots to patrol drug tunnels concentrated along the Mexican border. Officers can remotely control the robot from the surface and receive live footage of the tunnels captured by its camera. The robot can cover the length of a tunnel in a shorter amount of time than a person could. Using robots protects officers from the hazards of an unstable tunnel. In one of the largest marijuana busts in the U.S., 32 tons of the drug were seized in a 600-meter tunnel running from Southern California to Mexico. Exoskeleton to allow paralyzed person to walk at World Cup. A mind-controlled exoskeleton will allow a paralyzed person to walk at the opener of the World Cup. The exoskeleton, part of a project called Walk Again, aims to use technology to overcome paralysis. The system consists of a cap fitted with electrodes, a computer and battery, and sensing legs. Electrodes in the cap pick up brain signals and transfer them to the computer, which converts them into movement. Sensors detect when the foot touches the ground and transmits the signal to an electronic vibrator in the arm, allowing the patient to associate the sensation with walking. Eight people are currently training to demonstrate the technology at the World Cup opener between Brazil and Croatia on June the 12th. The original plan was for one of them to deliver the opening kick. Hold on to your job. Robot replaces its first American service worker. Welcome to the future. It's a robot doing the job most humans couldn't be asked to do, helping other humans in a customer service capacity. You're looking at the Oshbot, and it now has a job at Orchard Supply Hardware in San Jose. Here in the demo, Oshbot helps its corporate slave master find a box of screws. All the better to screw over American workers. Oshbot is an autom autonomous navigational robot, and it does a lot. I think the thing that is most striking to people is it can help you find anything inside of the store. And you totally won't feel like an idiot walking like a grandma with a broken hip behind the Oshbot. Not like this guy. Let's face it, robots are the future. The makers of this robot claim it can make 360 delicious hamburgers per hour, better than your average minimum wage burger flipper. 
Even sex workers will one day be replaced by robots. Yet this man says with a smile that you're totally not getting fired. It is not meant at all for a reduction in our staff. Our greatest assets is our associates, and all it is is a resource for our associates to provide a higher level of service. See? You have nothing to worry about. Yeah, you're totally screwed. Fighting Samurai Robot, Japan's latest invention. The Japanese samurai fills history and some are the stuff of legends with their heroic deeds and unsurpassed swordsman skills. They also make for great anime heroes. But Japanese scientists have now combined two of anime's greatest love, the samurai and a robot, into a real-life robot samurai they've named Motoman. Motoman was born thanks to Yazkawa, a multinational company, and master swordsman Isao Machi. The Yazkawa Bushido project analyzes the master's moves with 3D imaging and programmed Motoman to recreate each precise move. In the video, which you can find on YouTube, the two compete side by side, slicing and dicing their way through rolled tatami mats, flowers, fruits, and a pea pod finishing with a grueling 1,000 cuts through assembled tatami mat targets. At the end, Machi looks exhausted, but Motoman is still ready to go. A team at the University of Sydney has developed a robotic herder to move cows from the pasture to the dairy. Unlike canine herders, the robot matches the herd's pace and prevents cows from sustaining injuries. The robot is equipped with a 3D LiDAR that sends out lasers to detect and track cows. A GPS system on board the robot tracks the vehicle's movements over the terrain. Data collected from these sensors produce a 3D reconstruction of the herd and the robot's movements on the pasture. The prototype requires human control, but the final version of the robot is expected to be fully automated. Bionic reconstruction allows for mind-controlled robotic arms. Three Austrian men with brachial plexus injuries have become the first people in the world to receive a mind-controlled prosthetic arm based on a new technique known as bioreconstruction. Brachial plexus injuries, often a result of trauma from high-speed collisions, disconnect the brain from the hand. Researchers were able to record and use the signal from slight contractions in the muscles when the patients move their shoulder, elbow, and forearm normally to open the bionic hand. To close the bionic hand, researchers transplanted the muscle from the thigh into the forearm to amplify a secondary nerve signal. A combination of these two signals allows the patient to rotate the wrist. Patients undergo cognitive training and training with the prosthetic hand attached to their non-functioning hand before amputating their hand to complete the bionic reconstruction. Researchers plan to apply the technique to patients with the functionless hand or leg caused by different injuries. They are also examining ways to decode muscular signals to achieve more intuitive control of the prosthesis. Unmanned robots have been developed to liquefy 900 kilograms of jellyfish in an hour. The jellyfish removal robot system, known as Geros, has an autonomous surface vehicle and a navigation system. The two-cylinder hull keeps the vehicle stable. Geros can move and rotate via its propellers. Geros's camera and visual processing algorithm can detect jellyfish. The navigation system then computes a path to perform jellyfish extermination. When Geros is positioned, the propulsion sucks up and liquefies the jellyfish. In an initial trial, a fleet of three exterminators shredded up to 900 kilograms of jellyfish in just one hour. Jellyfish infestation is a major problem in North Asia. It costs the Korean fishing industry approximately $280,000 a year. Japan will send a talking robot to the International Space Station on August the 4th. Known as Kirobo, the humanoid robot is 34 centimeters tall, 18 centimeters wide, and weighs about 1 kilogram. It is equipped with a voice recognition system and will be able to converse naturally in Japanese with astronauts. Kirobo can also recognize faces and emotions. It is designed to navigate while floating in zero gravity in outer space. The unmanned spacecraft H-2 Transfer Vehicle 4 will carry Kirobo to the International Space Station. The robot is expected to engage in a conversation with Japanese astronaut Kiyochi Wakata in December of this year. 
Researchers at the University of Bristol have developed a robot that can run entirely on the electricity it generates from processing urine. In the system's fuel cell, bacteria generates a small current as it breaks down urine. Electricity generated from the current heats up the pump's artificial muscles, causing a contraction that compresses the pump. Digested urine is pushed out in this process. As heat dissipates from the artificial muscle, the pump decompresses and fresh urine flows in. It takes two to three hours to recharge the pump in each cycle. This system is energetically autonomous and can also effectively process rotten fruits and vegetables.